In this video, we're going to walk through the Microsoft Lab store and share files in your application with Azure Files. Now, the idea behind this particular lab is that you have a server or a machine that needs access to a Windows file share. And when you move that machine up into the cloud, you need to have a file share that's available for it. So the Azure files that are built in, that's built into uh, Azure acts exactly the same as a Windows file share would on a traditional Windows machine, except it's up in Azure. Because it's up in Azure, it gives us some additional flexibility and some additional capabilities that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Now, the scenario we're working on in this environment is in the existing in, uh, existing corporate system, there are two systems, two servers. Uh, the first server has some sort of an application on it, and the second one is a file server. The application uses the file server and therefore needs access to that system or to that moving forward. The goal is to move all of this up into Azure, up into the Azure cloud. And so we want to move the Azure app, I'm sorry, the application up into the cloud. But because that application requires a file share, we also need to move a file share up into the cloud. So instead of actually moving the file server, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new file share in the cloud and give access to that application server. So let's go ahead and get started. So here in the lab, we start off and we'll go into the introduction page. Uh, talks a little bit about the Azure file shares, about how it's a cloud sh cloud based file share system, uh, has lots of capabilities and discusses some of them here. Then goes into planning the file share deployment and about how it works and how you would actually plan that out in your environment. Uh, gives a little bit of a breakdown as far as what Azure files are. Now Azure files, basically it starts off with a storage account. Inside that storage account, you actually get multiple file types, you get access to multiple file types. In this particular case, we're concerned with the file shares. But once we have that storage account in the file share section, we can create a share. This is exactly what you do in most traditional Windows file servers. Uh, the file server would be this guy right here on the left. Uh, and then the file share would be the shares that you create off of that. Inside the shares, exactly like you do with existing Windows shares, you can create directories such as tools and logs and so on. Uh, and then inside of those directories, you can have multiple files. Uh, it gives a little bit more detail about those, talks about the uh, data access, uh, talks about performance. Uh, very briefly, standard performance, double digit millisecond latency. Uh, you can look on on Azure's website to see what the specifics of this are. This is probably 10 to 20 milliseconds. Uh, 10,000 IOPS with 300 megabytes of throughput. Now the 10,000 IOPS at first glance may sound a little low. However, if you have a traditional HDD drive in your computer that you're looking at right now, that HDD drive is going to have somewhere between 80 and 120. IOPS. Therefore, 10,000 is, well, that's considerably more. Uh, so even though it doesn't necessarily seem a lot uh, when compared to what a traditional hard drive on a desktop computer is, that actually does become quite a bit. Uh, there's also a premium performance. Again, there would be a premium pricing with it. Uh, the latency is faster, the perform uh, overall IOPS significantly larger, and then the overall throughput is larger as well. Uh, then talks about the various storage options such as LRS, ZRS, and GZRS. Uh, LRS, locally redundant storage. Z is the zone redundant storage. And then GRS is a glo uh, globally redundant storage. Does it actually say? Geographically redundant storage, I think is what it is. Uh, and basically it has to deal with how many copies of the data and where that data is and talks about the availability of those various services. And then lastly, it starts talking about some of the data migration options we might have. 
Now, I really do appreciate this diagram here because if you are moving data up in Azure, you may not know the best or optimal way to do it. And so what they've done is they've kind of given us a nice little chart with the amount of data you're transferring, with having a little bit all the way up to a whole lot, and your available network bandwidth going from zero up to 100 gigabit bandwidth. And it kind of gives you a nice diagram of how you might break this apart depending on your speed and needs. Basically, it starts off, well, you know, if you have like, uh, what is that, about 75 gigabytes or less, well, you can use these guys right here. You can use some for form of just simply a web copy over the internet. If you need more than that and you don't have a whole lot of bandwidth, you can get what's called a data box, specifically of a size disk. And this is essentially Microsoft sends you a disk, uh, a USB drive that you plug in and you copy data over. When it's full, you send it back to Microsoft and they load it up into Azure for you. Really great. Uh, there's different sizes of these data boxes, including a data box heavy, uh, in which case you can move uh, petabytes worth of data at one chunk. Eventually it gets into some continuous integration options where you can have a gateway or an edge device uh, that automatically synchronizes data for you and make sure that the cloud has the same data that you have in-house or that everything is on the cloud and then the data box just simply caches the data locally so it looks like it's local but it's still actually remote. So lots of different options for us to choose from. Then talks about how we can create those Azure shares and there's a couple of different ways. Uh, I'll go through this very quickly, um, but the first way is to start with the Azure CLI. This is one of my favorite ways to do it just because it's so quick and easy. And these Azure commands, if we read these backwards, actually makes a whole lot more sense as far as what we're going to be doing. For instance, we want to create. Well, what do we want to create? We want to create a storage account. Where do we want to create it? In Azure. So if you read it backwards, it makes a little bit more sense than simply storage account create. Yeah, create a storage account. Uh, down here, we see a more full example. We've got the uh, create, store, create storage account command right there. Uh, along with that, we'll see that there's a name, the name for the storage account, uh, whatever we want to call it, the resource group that we want to put it to, and then the size and performance characteristics that we're looking for with regards to the storage count. Uh, so that's one way to create the storage count. Uh, once we've done created the storage, cr done creating the storage count, inside the storage account, we create a file share, which is exactly what we're doing here. We're going to create, we're cre creating a share in our storage on Azure. Down here, we have a more full example color coding's not shown for some reason. Uh, but you can see, yeah, go ahead and create the storage account. Oh, I'm sorry, create the storage share. You specify the storage account that you created up above, uh, an account key as necessary, as well as the name of the file share. And then lastly, when we connect, uh, this is actually an example that's given to us through the portal. Uh, it gives us one way to be able to connect to the file shares. And we'll see this as we go through this lab. Uh, this connect button opens up this tab on the right hand side and then gives us, in this case, a PowerShell as well as a command line version of essentially mapping that file share remotely. Uh, we can authenticate with Active Directory. In this case, we're not going to. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be authenticating with a shared key. Shared key essentially is what you're doing with your house. Uh, you have a key. Anybody else in that house should have a key. Uh, and then whenever you need to change security, what you do is you simply replace the locks for your house and new keys are in use. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start talking about creating and connecting to the Azure file shares. Uh, I'm gonna start off by uh, activating my sandbox. 
Uh, the sandbox, if you're not super familiar with it, basically it's a little play area. Allows me to play and do something in Azure in a way that's not going to hurt me or anybody else. When I'm done with the sandbox, it will go away all on its own. So anything I do in this environment uh, is non-disruptive non and will simply be cleaned up when it's done so I don't even have to worry about finishing with it. Uh, this particular lab gives me one hour to do this all. Awesome. All right, so this, this documentation right here talks about the scenario. Remember, we have an application server that we wanna move up into Azure and we have a file share that is needed to move with that file share or with that application server. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a storage account and then we're gonna create a virtual machine in Azure. The virtual machine will simulate our application server. All right, so this first step, I'll break this down very uh, briefly first. Uh, first thing we're gonna do here is this export command. Now export command, Basically what it's doing is it's creating a variable. In this, create, in this case, it's creating a variable called storage account. When I've exported it, I can then do an echo dollar sign storage account. And we'll see that it created a file or a name here called learn Azure file share with the numbers 3103 at the end. And we look up here in the original export command, uh, we have the learn Azure file share with dollar sign random at the end. So it created a random set of numbers at the end of the name. This is necessary because each file share in Azure has to have a unique name. And so this is just creating a random string at the end to help us out. Next, I'm gonna copy this next section here and go ahead and paste that in. And if we read this again from right to left, we're going to create a storage account in Azure. The name of this storage account is that storage account variable that we just created in the prior step. The resource group is the resource group that's provided to us from the Microsoft Labs here. And then the SKU or size and capabilities is going to be the standard GRS. So it went ahead and it created, and we could see all the outputs here. Ooh, lots of information. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go into the next section, which is gonna use the Azure CLI to get the storage account key. Again, this is the key that is similar to the key at your door, at your house. Uh, so we're basically running the command. We're going to list, we're listing keys, in our storage account in Azure. Uh, a few more specifics, that resource group, that storage account, and then filter it out just to show me the key to the point to where now I can do an echo storage account storage key. And I see this big long key right here. Uh, okay. So now that our storage account is created and we have the key to be able to access that storage account, now let's create some shares. And that's what these two guys do right here. First one is to create a first share called reports, and the next one is called data. I'm just gonna copy and paste these in and let them run. Uh, you can see very quickly, they are the, pretty much the same command. Uh, again, create a share in storage on Azure. Here's the storage account or the name of the account that we want to create the share in. Here's the associated key for it. And then the name is reports. And the same thing, name of data. All right, so the next step is to create the Windows server. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this in here and run it as is. This is, if we look through this command, it creates a virtual machine in Azure, gives me the resource group to create it in, what I should call it, in this case, 2019 file server, that's going to be its name, oh, password. Uh, 
All right. Uh, it's image, uh, it's name, which is 2019 file server. That's just the friendly name I'm going to call it. What image to base this off of? So which operating system? In this case, 20, uh, Windows 2019 data center. And then the admin username is going to be the Azure user. While that's running, we can go ahead and open up the Azure portal. Open that up in a new tab. Confirm I'm logged in with the right user account and it says Microsoft Learn Sandbox. If I look under storage accounts, I should start seeing, first off, there's a Cloud Shell account. That storage account is created when I create the Azure Cloud Shell. Uh, we will ignore that one. That's not too important at this point. The second one is this Learn Azure File Share 3103. Now that's the exact same name that I created the storage account with in our when we first started looking into it. If I click on this, there are lots of different options in here. Uh, and for instance, there is a blob service, which we haven't talked about. Uh, there is a table service, which we haven't talked about, and there's a queue service, which we haven't talked about. In this case, we are curious about the file service. Under file service, if I click file shares, I should see my shares showing up. Why are my shares not showing up? That is the right name, isn't it? 3103. Let me uh, refresh the portal. Sometimes it is a web page. Oh, there they are. Uh, there's my data and there's my reports. It is a web page. Sometimes you just have to click a refresh. Uh, if I look in data, there's nothing in there currently. Um, however, I can say like add directory, I'll call this test. And it creates a folder called test. Uh, if I go into test, oops, I could also say upload a file. And so I could select one or more files to upload. Uh, sure, let's take that guy right there. It's a nice little picture. And I can simply upload the picture into the file share. Not super exciting when running through a web browser because you have to do this one file at a time. Uh, however, it still shows that it works exactly the way we might expect it to. All right, uh, so it says when the virtual machine is done creating, open up the Azure portal, select the VM and connect to RDP. Uh, all right, so let me do that. Back to the Azure portal. I'm gonna select virtual machines. If this option isn't available for you, Click the hamburger menu over here, come down to virtual machines, click that. There I can see my 2019 file server. I wanna click connect, RDP, and download. Downloads a file for me, which I can go ahead and run. Let me set the password here. Let's see, that was a Azure user, password one, two, three. and it starts connecting in and the very first time we connect in it will take a couple of seconds for the screen to show properly just because it is just starting up for the first time all right so we'll wait for that to connect now we can start using these file shares so this virtual machine in our scenario we we have an application server and then we have a file server in theory, we already created a replacement for the file server using Azure file shares. That virtual machine we just created is our simulated application server, so we need to start testing it to make sure the file shares work properly. So for that, we want to map a drive. We want this share to show up as a file share, uh, as a letter on the local machine. So it says look into the storage accounts, look into that file share, Select the data share, connect. We want to specify the F drive, and then we want to copy the PowerShell command. So let's go ahead and do that. So back to home, uh, I'm gonna choose storage accounts. Again, if this isn't here, click the hamburger menu, storage accounts, takes it to the same place. I want my file share. Uh, again, all the way down to file services and shares. 
data. I want to choose connect, and this is, helps me to connect up to the system. Uh, let's see, drive letter, it said F. And then I want to copy this right here. Now that I've copied that, I want to go back into my virtual machine that is just now booting up. Go away. Close all that, and I want to open up PowerShell. Make this text a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. There we go. So I copied the text, now I'm just gonna right click and hit enter. And this is going to connect up to the Azure file services. This is gonna act up, uh, connect up to the file share and map that as the F drive. We can see here, yeah, okay, here's the F drive. I went ahead and mapped to this file share location. That's truncated because it is actually a really long path, but it at least connected. Now, if I open up Windows File Explorer, click on this PC, I should now see my data file right here. There's my test file, just, just to be sure, let's open it up and look at my picture. It's got it, awesome. All right, at the same time, I believe the instructions told me to do the same thing for the reports share. All right, so let's go back to connect, back to my uh, file share right there, choose reports. Maybe. We refresh the page there, see if that works better. There we go. Uh, connect. Uh, this time I want to choose the G drive. Copy that. And this time I'll show that. I'll, I'll have a Windows Explorer on the right hand side uh, as I right click and oh, try that again. Copy, paste, and there we go. The reports drive showed right up saying that it's working perfectly. Awesome, so we have a file share in Azure right here. Uh, here's our report share, our other share was data, all showing up under our storage accounts. Perfect. So not only do we have the file share, but we actually mounted it on a Windows machine in Azure. Uh, let's see, okay, let's try to look at the F drive. Let's create a new document. Let's call it test. Sure. So let's go ahead and try to create a new file. New file, let's call this a text file. Uh, let's just call it test file one. I can open this up and I can put something in here and then save that. And just for fun, I'm gonna Control C and V. I'm gonna copy that out a bunch of times. In fact, I'm gonna copy and paste this a whole lot. Let's make a lot of files in here. All right, so I just created uh, ooh, 55 different items in this folder. Uh, if we come back into the storage or into the Azure portal, we should be able to see those files through the file shares in the Azure portal. All our data, and there's all of our files. Awesome. So we do in fact have a file share and it is synchronized into Azure. All right, so the next section in the lab starts talking about securing access to our file shares. Uh, and it talks about how we can, some of the ways that we can do this. 
Now, if we're on premise, if we're doing this inside of our own private data center, chances are we have a firewall, which is helping secure the environment. And it just so happens Azure has the same thing. Uh, so it goes through a couple of different options. First one is to specify only SMB 3.0. Uh, and so we could actually remove a feature from our Windows machines uh, that supports SMB version one, which is insecure. Next, next section in here is talking about creating an IP-based firewall rule, which we'll be doing here in just a second. And you can see the options down here. First off, there's a PowerShell command that we can use, um, add az storage account network role, network rule. Again, if you read it, if you read this slowly, it kind of makes sense. Add Azure storage account network rule. Uh, so which resource group, which storage account, and then which IP address or range do you want to allow access? Do the same thing through the Azure CLI. And if we read this one from the right to the left, add a network rule to the storage account, and then the same options, which resource group, which storage account, and which IP addresses are allowed. The next item is to require secure transfer for all connections. Now this is what's called data in motion. A lot of security areas talk about securing data in two ways. Uh, first is securing data at rest when it's on your hard drive. And the second is securing data in motion or when it's moving from one location to another. By requiring secure tra data transfers, that means all the data must be encrypted while it's moving from point A to point B. Uh, if we, when we look at our Azure uh, configuration, we'll see under the settings section, there's a configuration button and the option is right here, secure transfer required. If you set that to disabled, secure transfer will be requested but not required. Uh, unless your application absolutely requires that to be set to disabled, you would definitely want to leave it as enabled. Uh, same thing, set that through PowerShell or through the Azure CLI. Uh, so let's see, if we read this, set the Azure storage account. So we're going to set some property on the Azure storage account. Uh, which storage account is those options right there. And then what option do we want to set? Enable HTTPS traffic only. That's the keyword there, only. And it's true. All right, so only secure traffic is allowed. Awesome. Same thing with the Azure, Azure CLI. Update the storage account. Which storage account? And then what are we updating? HTTPS is true. Uh, enabling the use of Azure Active Directory for authentication. That's another option. Uh, using snapshots to protect against accidental deletion. Occasionally you may come in and you may delete something by accident, or you may make changes to a file and want to roll back those changes. A snapshot is what helps us protect that environment. This is similar to the idea of a backup doesn't necessarily replace a backup, uh, but the idea is similar to a backup to where you can actually roll back to a prior time. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and let's jump back in. So the first thing we're gonna do is enable secure transfer. All right, so if we look through here, it talks about storage accounts, settings, and configuration. So let's look in the portal. Go into our storage accounts and specifically the Learn Azure file share that we just created. Under the settings section, we want configuration. And then uh, right here, secure transfer required. Uh, by default, it is set to enabled. Again, don't set it to disabled unless you absolutely have to. And if you do in fact have to, you probably will want to specify or create a separate storage account specifically for those applications and those storage uh, areas that want that to be disabled. 
All right, next one, add a firewall rule to restrict access to IP, to an IP address. Now, in this case, the instructions are a little bit, didn't, don't quite work for me. So I'm gonna go slightly off the instructions. Actually, I'll follow the instructions first, and then I'll show you how I would actually do it. So same thing, we're still in the file share. Uh, however, what we wanna do is we wanna scroll down to the, oh yes, under settings, we want firewalls and virtual networks. So the instructions say, take allow access from all networks and choose selected networks. You'll notice that the, uh, the view changed as soon as I said that. The instructions say, come in here uh, under firewall and type in the specific IP address or range of our virtual machine. If I look at my virtual machine, I can see up here at the top, my IP address is 13.64.193.159. And that's the IP address we want to allow. So I'm moving that to another screen so I can read that IP address, 13.64.193.159. And that should allow an exception for that one specific IP address. That's what the instructions tell us to do. Historically, I've had issues with just adding that IP address. And so what I would do is actually come up here to where it has the virtual network section. I want to add an existing virtual network. So I'll choose add, uh, choose the subscription virtual networks. Ooh, it's not showing up. Maybe, let's try saving that. There we go. Uh, don't know why it took a few seconds to show up, but it did eventually. Uh, so under virtual networks, I want to choose my 2019 file server VNet, and then subnets, I want to choose the 2019 file server, and then say enable. And so that enables the endpoint on the machine for me. And then I believe I need to wait for it to say okay. Enabling access will take up to 15 minutes to complete. That's great. Uh, after it's safe to complete, I don't want to complete. There we go. Okay, so now add. Uh, when I clicked add, I can see that the VNet showed up, including the address space, and then finally save. This step I always forget. I want to click save. If I don't click save, everything I've typed in on that window goes uh, stops working. All right, so now, in theory, I have access to this in two different ways. Uh, first off, I have access to the to the virtual network that the 2019 virtual server is on, as well as the public IP address, and only those. So now I can come into, oops, into my Windows machine, and I can see, yes, I still have access to the data and the reports file shares. Reports file share is empty, so there's not really anything to look at, but I still have access. However, the permissions that we just specified will block everybody else from accessing this environment. And that includes me running here at my, desk, at my home machine. So let's see, we were at the learn file share. If through the web browser, I come in here to the file services and file shares, and now I try to view the data share, I will get a permission denied message. So the file permissions, I'm sorry, the, uh, the file share firewall permissions that I just set on that file share block not only computer access, but also block web-based access based on those IP addresses. Now, just to confirm that this is what I'm doing, let's go ahead and add my local computer. So I'm gonna go back up to the file share, can go back to the firewall permissions, 
and I'm gonna do this handy dandy little checkbox right here that adds my client IP in there already. So I check that, say save, and that adds the client IP or the IP address of the machine I'm currently on in my home into Azure. And if now when I go back up to file shares, then I click save. All right, file shares and data, and now I should have access. So those permissions actually do work really well. Uh, if I was in a business environment, I may want to have my corporate uh, building have access to this file share as well as the devices up in Azure. All right, so that was adding a firewall. Great, testing the firewall, awesome. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna create a snapshot on our shares. Now the portal uh, has changed a little bit since these instructions, so we have to go a little bit different. Uh, but basically we look at the file share and we're gonna look at the data file share and then we're gonna click create snapshot. So let's do that. Well, we're already in the data file share, that's perfect. We'll notice that there's no create snapshot button up here on the top. They, they actually moved it over here onto the left. So we go ahead and go into the uh, snapshots and we say, yeah, let's go ahead and add a snapshot. For lack of imagination, I'm just gonna call this snap one. Now snapshot is essentially similar to a backup. If you've worked with Windows file servers before, you know that a Windows file server can keep changed copies or can keep backup copies of files so that as they change, uh, you're able to see what the previous versions of those files are. That is what this snapshot does, is it allows us to see previous versions of those files. Um, yes. So if I go back into my machine here, back into my virtual machine, which is simulating my application, and let me refresh this really quick. It seems to work better if I refresh it. There we go. Uh, and now just right click on any of these files and go into properties. On the properties tab, or properties view, I have this previous versions tab. And in there, it should, uh, should show me some previous versions. All right, let's try this again. Let me try to copy and paste all of those. Come back in here, do another snapshot. We'll call this snap number two. And now let's see if the previous versions show up. Still no previous versions. They will show up eventually. I wonder. Yeah, they will show up in there eventually uh, and the date and time of showing in that list will actually co uh, coordinate with these dates and times of those snapshots being created. Uh, why it's not working for me? Well, it just doesn't like me. Let's try one more time, refresh, refresh, and properties. Yeah, it just doesn't like me. All right, so that's working with file shares. The file shares are, again, look exactly like Windows file shares. They're just out in the cloud. Uh, there you go, that's what it should look like. So they are just simply out in the cloud for us to have fun with. Uh, file shares may not necessarily be the optimal way to handle storage in the cloud. In fact, there's other ways that are both quicker, more reliable, and less expensive 
than the Windows file shares. Uh, however, if your application has to utilize Windows file shares, this is a direct migration capability for you. All right, have a good one.